terms of how Brown institutionally is responding, both as a university and a hospital, what has the response been? And, and um, uh, just share that with us, please. Overall, the response has been wonderful. President Paxson and our provost, uh, Richard Locke, were very forward thinking in terms of um, decisions about kind of how to handle our undergraduate and graduate students, decisions around postponing large events so that we wouldn't get the larger Brown community sick. And um, the campus in general, uh, both the med school and also the larger university, have been really good about supporting supporting the students. I think this is a really anxiety producing time for all of them and any of you out there who have kids in college have experienced them coming home. We recognize that at Brown because we do value supporting all of our learners, you know, we're, we're really doing our best to try to support people no matter what their home situation is, recognizing that there's a wide variety out there. You know, there are some folks that are going to a place that may not feel safe, that may not have adequate internet access and trying to work around that. Um, it's been nice in the last week or two. We've restarted classes. Um, you know, my independent studies with my students are going strong. Um, but I've also watched my colleagues really kind of modify things to be respectful of what our students are going through. What are the top things of mind that you would want to share with people or you would want people to either know or disregard? I think it can play both ways, right? So the first and biggest thing is that social distancing or physical distancing is a very important and essential part of our public health response. Mm. Uh, for the short term, we need people to stay home in order for us in the healthcare system to have adequate resources to take care of the people that are getting really sick. And I think it's, I know it's really difficult. Listen, I've got two little kids who are doing distance learning and hopefully won't interrupt this um, <laughs> this interview, but uh, it is, so I, I know I am not seeing my parents um, who live down 15 minutes away. It's really tough, but it is so essential. The second thing is to recognize that this is not going to disappear, but that there are a lot of smart folks, not necessarily myself, but other people at Brown, but no, we're, we're all working together to, um, to create strategies to help us as a society make it through this epidemic. So we're focusing on the very acute needs that we have right now to keep our healthcare workers safe. But we're also thinking about the bigger picture. The third big thing is to know that we are working hard on advancing the science, but we just don't have answers yet. Uh, and that to know that we at Brown are desperately trying to create those um, and are working as quickly as we can, but to bear with us and to read the news critically and deeply and um, always feel free, I would say, to reach out to us within the Brown community um, who are trying to do this work because one of the things that I've been so impressed by is the value of the network. Um, our work with Get Us PPE has been so enhanced by the generosity of humans across the country who bring a variety of different skill sets and expertise, many of them outside of medicine. Um, and, and I will expect that as we create good science but also a good response to COVID-19, that that network is gonna have a um, huge impact in our ability to grow and survive and thrive in the months that will pass after this pandemic. Something that isn't as widely discussed is the emotional psychological toll on care providers. And so I wanted to ask you as someone who um, is a care provider herself and also um, engaged with teams um, in Rhode Island at Brown, um, what, has, what has the impact been and also how can the Brown community or the public in general support you? Thank you for that question. I really appreciate it. Um, so honestly, the impact, I think the mental and emotional impact of this pandemic on frontline providers um, and on our med students um, is only just beginning to be felt. Um, the anxiety and stress and frustration uh, that is expressed by my colleagues, both locally and nationally, is like nothing I've ever heard. Uh, I work in, worked in public health for a long time. Um, I worked as, you know, helped with early HIV AIDS, not early, but kind of in, in the late 90s and 2000s was part of the response to that, felt a lot of similar frustrations, but never to the level that I'm hearing um, today. 
I think folks are anxious because they are potentially putting their own lives at risk, right? Because of the lack of protective equipment, because it is physically exhausting. Um, the donning and doffing of protective equipment is the wearing of a mask the entire time you're in a hospital. Um, the uh, physical care for these very ill patients is truly, it is physically draining on healthcare providers. There are a lot of folks, including people here at Brown, um, Dr. Brewer um, from, from the School of Public Health among them, who are thinking about how to mitigate uh, that um, psychological impact. Uh, but I think from the perspective of the larger, and, and I'll say that um, Dean Elias and the larger med school community have just been amazing um, in terms of supporting the med students and um, trying to support faculty. Um, but there, um, it's a tough thing. So kind of how can, how can the larger community support us? I think part of it is honestly, it sounds really silly, but these notes of appreciation and uh, opportunity to share our stories and just the sense that we're being listened to makes a big difference. I think that one of the things that's really frustrating about this is that it feels like we're shouting into the void and no one's coming to help us. And so knowing that we're being heard and, and recognized is actually helpful. I think that anything that the Brown community can do to support healthcare providers in this moment, to support our healthcare institutions, is deeply appreciated um, and, and so, so very needed. Um, the third thing is, is, is thinking about uh, m less material ways that you can support healthcare providers. And I'm gonna give you an example. A group of Brown medical students actually organized childcare volunteering for oh frontline physicians, knowing that you know all of us, our kids are on distance learning. Many of us are trying to self-quarantine because we're taking care of COVID-19 positive patients. So um, even if we have home child care, we're trying to minimize expo their exposure to us. So the, the med students have been volunteering to, to help out um, and have organized this whole like distribution chain. So it's, it's a beautiful thing that is so meaningful. Um, another person from the Brown community recently contacted me and said, uh, she's a graduate of one of our residencies and said, hey, I can get a bunch of skincare samples from one of my reps. Can I put them together and deliver them to the hospital so that you can give them to the techs and the janitors and all of the support staff? And like that kind of thing makes a huge difference. So that would be the third thing that I would say that people can do. Um, you know, this, again, that emotional support is critical. The financial support is just so needed, but, but those other things also make a, a really, really big difference because we are just all going as quickly as we can right now. Thank you for sharing this. Any final closing remarks? I think that kind of my final thing is just to reiterate how lucky I feel to be part of this community, especially right now, to see the ways that we're mobilizing to take care of ourselves, but also to take care of the larger community, and to really reiterate to the Brown alums that are out there, um, the degree to which this larger network can make a difference for uh, our ability to continue to do great things at Brown going forward. Thank you for your knowledge and optimism and all of the work. Oh, goodness, thank you. Thank you.